Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Longridge and Mr. Stevens. How are we? Good afternoon, very well, thank you. Good to see you. Wonderful, wonderful. So we're going to uh, start our third instalment of uh, these conversations that we're having regarding the NEA and the criteria that students need to follow in order to be successful in their projects. We've already established 1.1, which is the secondary research, and 1.2, which is the, the, the writing of a design brief. Um, and now we need to talk about uh, the stakeholder needs and wants and indeed the primary user needs and wants. Um, I think it's probably a good idea to start with an exemplar, Mr. Stevens. I think, no you problem. Know, there yes. we go. So this is quite a, quite a comprehensive example. This one's plenty of detail. This is over four different slides. Mm -hmm. um, it contains some excellent primary, primary feedback. Um, so you've got a questionnaire there that is you know, the answers are in lots of detail. It's not a yes or a no. It's not a closed question questionnaire. Uh, it leaves the, the respondent with plenty of opportunity to expand on their answers. Okay, so Mr. Lawrence, what, what's the point of this section then? What, why are we doing 1.3? Why is it important to talk to these people? Well, in 1.2, you've established your design brief. So you've put together, uh, hopefully, the, uh, the starting point for your project. You now know what you're kind of looking at doing and, and hopefully you'll have an idea of the direction you're going. The starting point for 1.3 is really to, to find out more about the stakeholders or the people that could be involved or affected by your product. So as we're, we're looking at these, Mr. Stevens rightly said that the previous page was strong because it's a questionnaire where uh, the, the student has spoken to a range of people in fact, this has been done on SurveyMonkey. It would have been nice in this instance if they'd actually done some screenshots of SurveyMonkey to show that. They, they're exploring the people that may, that may use this product. In this page, I think she's spoken to two people that are linked to, or one person looks like her, the primary stakeholder, the person that's actually gonna be using the product. And interview two looks like our school uh, catering manager. Uh, Mr. Cullen. So Mr. Cullen there was, she spoke to Mr. Cullen and found out about his needs and his wants. You can see by the style of responses to the questions that they're quite fluid and quite open. I can see that uh, this student has, has let the conversation flow to, to find out more. And she's trying to get points here that will really help her find out exactly what the stakeholder wants. So this is establishing the criteria that they're then going to use when they're making the product. Yeah, I think something that stands out on, on those pages as well, that's, it, it seems like something and nothing, but it's extremely important, is, is the photographic evidence. Yes. So it's literally a photograph of the student with her prime user, with her stakeholder, but that makes it real, it makes it genuine evidence. It's not just something that you've typed up. So it's very important that you do get that genuine evidence. A photograph like that is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've, yeah. we've been practicing this, haven't we, over the, the last couple of years in the mini projects that we do, but essentially a stakeholder is any party or any person throughout the supply chain that could be directly affected by a new product that you create. And essentially a primary user is, is the person that's going to be using that cheaply or using that product cheaply. And I think the whole point about this is that we are getting information directly from those parties because in essence, they should know more about the industry or the sector that we're working in than we do. So it's about that fact finding, isn't it, from real people. And uh, in this example, we can see the students then done an observation so observing a one of her potential users, looking at how this person gardens, looking at the space that they have. So uh, any technical details like measurements or photographs to show the workspace. Uh, I know that in terms of the context that we're doing in, or potentially doing working from home, it might be worth students photographing the size of a desk or measuring how big stationery is, trying to pull together the information that will help you design and develop a product that really will solve your problem. Yeah, the, the location study idea is perfect. If you've got an idea or when you get an idea of what your project is going to be and where it, where, where it will be located, a location study, if doable, which it should be for most people, is, is, is perfect. Uh, measurements, photographs, um, if you can talk to your primary user whilst you're there as well and get them in situ, I think that's even better. Mm -hmm. That previous example is really good in terms of narrative. So, if, uh, Mr. Stevens, if you wouldn't mind just slipping back to the orange example. Uh, you can see there on uh, the bottom of that page, bottom right, she says next. So what she's going to do next. Uh, if you could then move on to the next page, she then starts on 
Uh, and in these orange boxes at the top, she's saying what she's going to do, why she's doing it, and then what she's learned from those interviews. So again, it's really very clear as an examiner or the moderator looking at this page, I can see what she's thinking, what the relevance of this piece of uh, primary research is, and then how she's going to use this in her project. So how, uh, how she'll put this information together to make her stakeholder requirements and primary user needs. So yeah, that's a really good example in my, my book. So looking at the criteria from the exam board, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things that, that pop out. One is, um, in order to get the higher mark bands is to evidence genuine contact with users and stakeholders. And Mr. Stevens, you've already alluded to the fact that having photographic evidence is, is one way that you can show the assessor or, or us when we're marking your work that, that that interaction has taken place through an evidence that you have actually had that conversation with a stakeholder or a primary user. Correct. There, there are other ways of doing it as well. We'll look at a few more exemplars soon and, and that'll evidence uh, other ways of, of showing your, uh, your research or further research. So we, we've just talked about, we want to talk to, I suppose experts, I use the term loosely, but experts in the field so that we can gather primary research that's going to help us in our project. We need to make sure that we're evidence in that, but what do we want out of the other end? What's the whole premise? What's the reason why we're doing this, this process? So <laughs> personally, what you are trying to get out is a long list of potential stakeholder needs and wants. So these are almost like a checklist of criteria that you're that you're going to model your your project against to show success at the end of your project. So you know, first and foremost, you want, you're just finding out as many of these key criteria as possible. And it might be that your stakeholder has a has a, a want or a desire for it to be a sustainable product from sustainable materials. Perhaps there are conditions within which that product needs to work. And if you're working in the kitchen, for example, it might be the temperatures involved, or it may be um, adhering to health and safety regulations, for example. But you should have an extensive list of stakeholder needs and wants. I would say anywhere from 20 onwards to start. Right. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. I think it's important to point out now as well that we are doing all this stakeholder and primary user needs and wants now. But well, that's not the end of it. We need to we need to focus on them all the way through. So it's not a case of you, you do an interview with your primary user now and that's it. You do need to go back and speak to them throughout the whole of the project to get their feedback. It might not be in the form of a questionnaire each time, uh, but you will need to to uh, be in contact with your primary user and stakeholders as much as possible throughout. Okay, so this example we've got potential primary users at the top. I know that some of you will have done this on your design briefs, so you may have already started by say started your design brief by saying these are people that I could uh, could work with uh, but what is nice here is the students clearly identified people they've got in the middle of the page email or some kind of communication I think Mr Stevens you were going to say something similar uh, to, about this about other forms yeah of th this example so it's over over three pages but the amount of different methods they've used of evidencing their research is fantastic so it's you know, screen grabs is something something that's so simple to do. Screen grab of emails uh, to potential uh, stakeholders. They've got uh, scans or photographs of, of mind maps they've done. On the next slide, they've just had a text conversation with, with the person that will be their primary user. And it's, it's it just makes it real. It's genuine. It's not, again, you know, just not just typed up um, or made up. It's real, real evidence. Yeah. So this candidate's also added, he's done some research into how to conduct research. Um, so conducting interviews for children who's found out the, the best way of approaching it, how do you structure your questions, how do you get good responses from yeah. from young young, uh, young people. Uh, it's done the same for, for general interviews as well, 25 starter questions for user research interviews. So, and it, But the, the fact is, is evidencing that in the, in the fold is not just doing it and then forgetting about it, it's there, it's for all, us all to see. Okay, an another way of evidencing, I'm not going to click on these, I don't think the sound quality will be very good, but you can record interviews as well. Mm -hmm. um, as well as writing, as well as photographing, as well as scanning, uh, an, an audio interview um, would, would be perfect. Yeah, and obviously in the times that we're, we're living at the moment, Zoom calls, Skype calls, Teams calls, all of these things can be designed or can be used to, to make sure that that authenticity rings through in terms of uh, in terms of your work. I, I'm, I'm picturing several several people, including you know screenshots of a Zoom call they've had or a Teams call they've had with with their peers. Uh, all of this accumulates in that list 
of uh, of requirement. So, Mr. Stoker, you've just said about having 20 points. This one's about 19 down the left side of the page. So it must be cost effective, especially since my product considers inclusive design and must appeal to children. In all of these points, you need to be as specific as you can be. Uh, You're simply exploring and summarizing the key findings of your research. So what are those things? Agreed. And I think, you know, I would certainly try and justify the reasons why these have made your list as well, as, as, as this candidate has done. But it's unrealistic that a product could fulfill all of this criteria all at once. And you'll see in that middle column there, which is highlighted in blue, this candidate has, has honed in on six primary user needs and they're the six that will govern the success of your project moving forward so you need to negotiate which uh, points in that extensive list are the most important or the most prevalent for this project and i would highlight i think six is a perfect number in terms of user needs i wouldn't go too too much above that and i certainly wouldn't use fewer than that because I don't think it adds enough challenge to your project. So if you can negotiate six primary user needs, uh, like I say, that are going to govern the success of your project, I think you're, you're going to be effectively answering this uh, this criteria point in 1.3. Yes. And the primary user is the person that will probably be using the product. Uh, in your stakeholder needs and wants down the left side of the page, that could be anyone. So uh, an example of a stakeholder could be the transportation or distribution company, the people moving the products around the country. Uh, it could be the re- retailer. It could be uh, a parent. So imagine you're, by- you're designing a product for a child, but the parent would still be a stakeholder because you're going to be making something for them to, uh, they're probably going to make the purchase. Lovely. I think that this one that's on the screen has been done particularly well in that it's not just a, a, a sentence, a statement, it, it's been justified as well. Mm-hmm. I think that's very important. Yeah. So just to wrap this video up, if we summarise the key expectations, uh, I'd expect to see a number of pieces of research that support the uh, and explore the, the design brief that you've already come up with. So uh, they look at the design brief. They take it to the next level in terms of giving you information that you didn't already have. And the the information is specifically about the stakeholder needs. So what the people that are involved in your product are going to need and want. Uh, And then that accumulates in a final page, which has the stakeholder needs listed, probably about 20 points. And then the primary user needs uh, extracted from those and as Mr. Stoko said, those are the six points that are probably going to be the most relevant for your actual user, for the person that's going to be uh, using the product. And, and again, I think just to echo Mr. Stevens, is just make sure that the evidence is um, is authenticated by making sure that you you make it you make it clear in your works. So that could be screenshots of conversations, of of video files, audio files, all of those types of things, just to make sure that that authenticity is absolutely evidenced. Perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank well, thank you again, Mr. Stevens and Mr. Longridge, for joining thank you us. Thank very much. I do hope that this is this is helpful to our year ten moving into year eleven as they are soon. Um, as ever, um, we are on hand. If you have any additional questions, uh, please email or get in contact. Um, and yeah, good luck with one point three, and we look forward to reading your work so far. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.